I'll call the meeting to order. I don't like we have anybody for public comment. So we'll move right on to the town administrator report. All right. <clears throat> so before you get to the item on your agenda, the Montgomery appeal on the Blodgett Trail. Mm -hmm. um, Katrina has the paperwork, but when you get to that, to the Montgomery appeal, all you need to do is approve the answers from Paul Gillis that he has written out. Okay. And on the Travis Blodgett motion that Paul has written out, <clears throat> um, he's filled it up to deny <coughs> Travis Blodgett the motion because it was filed after Montgomery's appeal. And once an appeal has been um, received, it's in the court hands and it goes out of the jurisdiction of the select board. So okay. that would be the basis of denying it. But in reference to his concerns that the trail that's being discontinued is not on the plat, that's correct. I know. So um, Rob Townsend is putting it on, on the plat. It will be a revised plat. Okay. Um, so his concerns will be addressed anyway. Oh, that's good. Okay. I don't think they're not charging Robin charging us for that, I think. I would say it was not because it should have been on there. All right. <clears throat> okay, well that's good. Okay. Um, so those are the first two. The last thing is the um, I did talk with the state of Vermont about getting a sign up by the mayor's snack bar, and they're doing their traditional thing. They're doing a traffic investigation. Just see if it's needed. I asked them to just put up a pedestrian yeah, sign. Just, just, they just they like have to go like through the whole. Yeah, like they have in Waitsfield Village. I mean, I don't know if they went through the whole thing there, but. Probably. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Dick Hoskin told me any signage that goes on the state rights of way, there needs to be a, approved by the traffic, I mean, necessary you know, traffic investigation. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with the water area, where Laura Gans has her, I asked them to base their investigation on lots of new houses in that area and right. an increase in traffic. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's about all I have. That's it? Mm -hmm. no. I have more, but okay. we'll come up later. Ray, you got anything? Uh, I didn't. Uh, Martin and I didn't even Henry Lewis. Oh, good. Um, the driveway thing is really, it's really not a town issue. You know, we made some recommendations on uh, what we would uh, we suggested was to put some sort of entrance for him, for his and uh, he was going to consider that. Um, mm -hmm. And then as far as the tree, uh, so the tree, as you know, is dead, but it's not, even though it's in the right of way, I just don't feel like the town is obligated to take it down. But there's no reason for us that to take it down. Was this tree? Yes. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't think there's any dead ones. I mean, there's three sick basswoods. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, yeah it's, it's sick or dead. One, one of them is. <laughs> All right. Well, but anyway, we don't feel like it's uh, a road hazard or mm -hmm. any hazard of town. And, uh, I, you know, I, I don't feel any responsibility or that, that we should pursue that. And I told him that. But I did tell them that, you know, I bring up the site board if they thought different. And, we go down the road, but uh, you know, there's a lot of there's a, as you know a lot of trees in the town of town right away that I don't think we can be responsible for every tree or else we'd be we we'd spend a lot of money on trees. Yeah, I mean they're they're, you know, so they're good trees until nobody wants to take them down and they go bad and then they're out, and they're not their problem. <laughs> we we have to town around and cut every tree before it got to be a nice looking tree then. I don't think that's what we want, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's my opinion anyways. 
Okay. So, yeah, that's why I left it up, you know, to Martin to take a look at it and see what he thought in terms of the road. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. And that's there was another there. issue with Martin as far as under the tree. Yes, that's in, um, that's in your whole business. The course of communication is there. Yeah. Did we talk about that tree with them too? I, I did not look at that tree. Yeah. I did He's, talk to he Martin. He sent an email. Yeah. He sent an email. So this is uh, from Charles and George O'Brien over on um, Cobb Hill. We have a concern of a large tree in front of our house on Cobb Hill Road. The tree is in the right of way for the road. The tree has lost several branches to that of course extension damage to the electrical lines and loss of power, not only to our house, but also our neighbors. Also it has caused damage to our siding on our house. We are asking the select board to please have the rest of the tree removed before more damage is done to our house and or the neighborhood. Would you please have an answer concerning this matter? Thank you. Charles and George O'Brien. Um, so, Martin and I were back a little bit on this. Um, let's see. That's an old one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's an old one where the same decision from before. Oh, yes, someone else did. Right, yeah. right, right, right. <clears throat> uh, it was an, I, I attached a letter just so that you could see that um, someone asked if this had happened before. Right, yeah, Jason wanted to lodge it. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. So, um, I took a look at the tree and the worst part that would have maybe been a road issue is gone. So the rest of the tree is leaning right at their house, but it has absolutely no problem with the road. Yeah. So unfortunately, it's nothing. I don't know if you can contact the power, if it's a power company issue, or whether they would do anything about it or not. Yeah. yeah. But, <clears throat> well, so he. Uh, did Martin, did Martin he recommended doing nothing. That it was yeah. not okay, so Martin did not talk to send a, any correspondence to him. Yeah, I mean, if, or did he? yeah, he actually, Martin um, did respond yeah, to all of us, which, which you saw. Um, and he just said that uh, he was aware of the tree. Charlie O'Brien has asked me about this tree numerous times. My answer to him has always been that he will have to involve the psych board on this tree. <clears throat> it appears that he has done as I request that the tree is in question. Uh, in question is indeed in the right of way. However, there are a lot of trees in town right away. I will not be making the decision on this tree. It will be an expensive takedown and require a tree service to do so. <clears throat> no, he didn't, re he didn't respond to O'Brien's. Okay, exactly. Right. So you need to respond to the letter. Yeah, and that letter that's attached is probably the same thing. Basically, the letter that I'll use is the same that went to Blodgett. Blodgett. The name, yeah. Right, right. Okay. How long ago was that? Uh, what was the date on this one? That was December 2012. Might, um, I, I would say in a letter it would be pretty much um, the joint opinion I saw from Mario. Okay. <clears throat> And this is from Isaac K. 
Kane. Uh, hello, Cheryl. I feel silly that I never sent a note thanking you for this generosity. We have not resolved the issue and doubt that we will. Wow. Though we appreciate your offer tremendously, we will respectfully decline the offer. The town can put it toward another community service that comes up instead. Thank you so much, Eliza and Randy. And so that was where we were going to set aside $500. Yeah. That was a reward, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, And from Steve Smith, I shall this email is to inform you in the select board that I have retired from the fire department as of tonight, dated July 17th. I am leaving for personal reasons. I have spoken to both Stephen Pratt, Captain and Will Houghton, First Assistant Chief, about my departure. There will be a, a special meeting in-house to elect a new chief. Just to call me if you wish. Okay, and then here's the letter from uh, Dick Hoskin. And then from uh, Mark Podgeweight of the Waterbury Ambulance. Folks, as I'm sure you recall, Jim Hermanowski and I met with each of your town select boards around the end of 2017 and discussed general funding opportunities for WASI. At that time, we all agreed to come back together in 2018 to discuss this further. It appears that time has come. I would like to propose a meeting date time of Tuesday, uh, 4th of September at 1 p.m. at the uh, Waterbury Ambulance uh, Station. Please let me know if this works for you, and if not, please propose an alternate date and time. Thank you for your time. We look forward to a fruitful discussion. Mark. You guys have a meeting that night. Right. Right. Um, would we like to propose an alternate date? How about September 10th? The following Monday? September 10th. You have a special meeting that night, so with the PC and DRB and zoning. I'm oh, asking if that you want to okay. add them to it as an alternate um, date. I want to take them that night. No. Huh? The night of the 4th. What do you mean? Or could we put them on the agenda for, for the 4th? Well, we could, but they wanted they wanted a meeting. Their meeting. <coughs> oh, that's their meeting. They right. Yeah. Meeting but at one p.m. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Well, I suppose we could either either the fourth or the tenth. I couldn't do that. I couldn't do the one o'clock. But it'd be nice to have more of an agenda from them. They're, are they proposing some sort of budget increase, which I'm sure? Or? I don't know. We can ask them that. If they're proposing a, a per capita budget, you know, um, with the towns, is that what they're asking for? Yeah. Most of the time, when, when, when they ask for services like that, it's on a per capita basis. Right. So if they could give us some more information, maybe we could talk about, or I don't know, maybe you could go to the meeting on the board, John, and whatever we could have. We could talk, put it on our agenda for the board and talk about what they want to do, and then maybe we can determine if we need to meet with them at that point. Yeah, I could probably do that. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, we're here to just find out what's going on. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> so just let them. Is that the Waterbury Ambulance? What do they call themselves? Yeah. Wasi. W A S I. Wasi. <laughs> Waterbury Ambulance Service Inc. And then the uh, information.
information that uh, I'm more compost to on the chance to see that. Okay.
we need to talk about where we're at with the, the budget and everything, as you know, it's, it's over, it's over, and uh, you know, certainly, as we, the board has always said, we appreciate the service you give to the town, but um, unfortunately, we do have we do have budgets you know, per department, and, mm -hmm. and we need to stick to those budgets. Um, and so, pretty much going forward, you know, if there's anything that you need, it's going to have to come out of your own fund. Absolutely. You know, uh, this year, part of the reason that we went over budget so easily is we had unforeseen breakdowns with the equipment, and that that didn't help us out. I mean, and then there was the whole gear thing from when there was the uh, gas spill, mm -hmm. and we, you know, working through that. It, it can't all be foreseen, but we've certainly been trying to be as right. frugal as we can. Right. Right. Who, who is the chief now? It's kind of a, he's, he's the chief, I'm just dealing with the administrative stuff. Okay. Yeah. I mean, acting chief that we have our next election. You know, okay. what happens with. Congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and Sean, are you an uh, officer? Yes. So, when you say equipment breakdown, what kind of? Um, we had one of our pumps, most recently it blew a, a metal line in the back of it. It's a 98 truck and it finally just decided it was time to split the pipe so it was leaking water out. So we couldn't keep the tank on the truck full. Um, the primer blew apart on that same truck. So that was another though we didn't really foresee coming. And we did uh, regular maintenance on them, which is what we budgeted for. So that pretty much brought us to our budget and then all the other breakdowns brought it completely over. It might be, um, you know, with, with the age of some of the trucks, it might be uh, a fair time from the budget season to, to have a little bit more reserve in it for the unforeseen repairs. Right. You know, I, I think the select board has always been pretty supportive of the, of the fire department. You know, Absolutely. You know, I think it's just a matter of getting the, the budget and try, and, and like I just said, you can't budget, or you can't foresee everything. But Absolutely. Certainly, if we get it out there in the budget, we're all on the same page, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. So I have a, a clutch for place, too? Uh, we need to have that done. That'll be, to have that done. Yes, we are trying to limit that truck through okay. until the new budget. Mm -hmm. What truck is that, Stefan? It's our tanker truck. Tanker. And, you know. That's the E3? No, it's tanker one. Tanker one. Yeah. We were told by uh, Jordan and uh, oh, I can't remember his name. Glenn. Glenn Johnson, that it, it needs to be replaced. It could go the next time we take it out, or it may not go until we get it fixed. So we've just been trying to not take it anywhere unless we need to for an emergency. Mm -hmm. You know, we're doing trainings and stuff. We're not we're not taking that truck out and, and putting the extra wear and tear on it to try to get it through. Mm -hmm. well, is there an estimate on the repair for that? Um, I don't know if you wrote up an estimate or not. Is that what this, this is? Part of that, there's, a, there's um, repairs on E1 down there. And R E E1? There's repairs on three trucks, I think, on there. But the clutch is on your lower left-hand corner. Right, okay. They did adjust the clutch. To yeah, try okay, to so they, they adjusted the clutch, okay. To try to get us through. <laughs> okay. So everybody, everything else on here is all that, what's itemized. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I guess we'll need a, a price for <coughs> repair or a new Absolutely. Car. I'm sure you're pursuing that. Yeah, I'll, I've been working with him to try to figure it out. And he was, we've been talking back and forth. And before it becomes time for budget numbers, I'll have to the estimated cost of that. 
so that we can try to budget that as well. Mm -hmm. okay. Any idea off the top of your head? 1,000, 2,000, 3,000? I would say, I would say closer to five because they've got to take it to their shop. They've got to pull the motor transmission apart and it's an older truck, so I don't know if things are going to come apart easy or not. But that would, I would say that would be a ballpark. I could be I mean, completely wrong. Probably be a high number. It would be a high number. That would be a high number. For sure. So we're going to want to get at least three bids. Yeah. We're going to want to get. J and B, or is that an international? Yes, it is. J and B and maybe Clark's, Clark's yeah. and Johnson, or yeah, absolutely. You don't need that for budget time, but you will before you fix it. Okay. And you know, was this we offered to Steve in the past? Um, you know, Cheryl was happy to. Help you with the books and everything. You know. Absolutely, I, I understand that. Um, I think we'll, you know, continue to to look at it. And I think you, it's going to be more beneficial to us. Is I'm going to start a, a file at the fire station, and then we know we have this much in the budget. We know we have these receipts for this month, and that should, you know, take care of the the wonder. Of, where, where, what we have left or what we don't have left or if we're over budget or not. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, and I um, understand that you are going to be here for more fest? That would be do, correct. Do the corn now. Do the corn? Yeah, we only usually get our corn from nails. All right. And kind of work on the street. Oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's crops not that great this year. Yeah. Plus, the whole weather thing, the barn collapsing. Right. Just wouldn't really look so well. Uh, then come looking for a donation. Uh -huh. I know he's probably more than willing to do it, but you know, yeah. with everything that's happened this year, we thought we thought it'd be best. Uh, let's let it ride a year. Uh -huh. and maybe next year come back. And would you consider doing something else? Cooking something else? I mean, yeah, you know, it's, it's such a big part of the community, you know, it, it really, we'd really miss you. Yeah. You know, the, the whole town would miss having you guys there. I mean, we'll be there for the fireworks, because we have a truck, we have, we're supposed to have a truck on scene mm -hmm. when we're doing those. But as far as, like, cooking stuff, probably not this year. But we have, you know, an idea to kind of have something there. There's been some discussion, some of the guys were interested in coming down was one of the trucks and kind of just having it having it opened up and like willing to nice. yeah like a test truck kind of thing you know maybe people will come oh what is the fire department doing and kind of show them what the equipment is and kind of what it what it does kind of a, a show and tell if you yeah mm -hmm. I think you want to show off your new gear that's true as well <laughs> absolutely although it doesn't necessarily look so new we've used it a little bit. <laughs> Okay. Well, that would be really good, I think, to tell a person. Have we requested the same thing from our highway department? Do they come down with a truck or a piece of equipment and park it here? That's a very good idea. Yeah. <laughs> they eat, are you willing to eat pies? Right? Michelle's doing the pie contest. Sean, right? you want to have a pie contest? Oh, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what's going to be. As of right now, I have a, a flight that I can't. Oh. Seem to get yeah. to come back without costing a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. But I'm, if that changes, I'll certainly be here. So I've heard that there has been uh, like a, you're losing a lot of all your a lot of your volunteers and not getting your volunteers like you would have been. Um, we certainly have been feeling the the national pain of you know volunteer fire departments. You know. Members come and you know they do what they can and you know life changes and they can't always help. We we have a a, a small crew but a, a fairly decent crew right now. Mm -hmm. But we certainly have been doing a lot of ups and downs and we can always use more people. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a problem that faces every single fire department, volunteer right. fire department in the country. Mm -hmm. um, you know Warren, Waitsfield, even. I mean, Maybe not so much Waterbury, but 
they're not buyers in every scenario. But yeah, I mean, it's just the way it is. I mean, there's a lot more things that occupy you know young you guys' time these days. All right. Cell phones, trucks, whatever. Um, there's a lot more distractions out there. And coming down every Tuesday, every other Tuesday night, and hanging out at the fire department isn't necessarily as cool as it used to be, mm -hmm. so to speak. Yeah. So it's. We got, like I said, like I said we, got, we got some young guys, and that's, you know, kind of good and a bad thing at the same time. You know, it's good to have the older timers that are there, have the experience, and can pass down their knowledge to the younger guys. But we need the younger guys there, too, to do the muscle work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, we're always looking for more, and we've actually been fortunate fairly recently to have a probably about four or five guys. Yeah, one, one night we ended up voting on five five people and that means they had come to the three consecutive yeah. meetings we had and we voted on one night five five new faces. Mm -hmm. The experience varies. I mean, there were a couple guys that had been on parts previously and are now living in the area and then there's a few that are just fresh faces. So. Do you have just more town guys on your crew? No, we got some ducks for you guys. Yeah. A couple guys that work in Waitsfield, or that live in Waitsfield. Yeah. And, uh, a couple of people that work in the department, don't they? No. no. Water brand has split coverage on that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. We're doing better than some, but not as good as we could be, I don't think. But. Mm -hmm. Can they help you advertise it all somehow? You put it on your website? Maybe, I mean, we have our Facebook page that we post on. Yeah. You know, that we can help out. you out with well, however we got sign it. We got to sign up to store, yeah. looking for members, but it's just one of those things. Yeah. I just found a new way to mail things super, super cheap. The, the um, post office let me know about it, mm -hmm. and it literally just goes to. Um, every single address. Just every door direct yeah. mail. Yeah. Yeah. Have you used it before? Have you used it before? Oh, okay. Because that's really that's not very expensive mm -hmm. to send a card out, right? Have yeah, you guys done that before? Yeah, but not for the fire department. Yeah, I have a work. Depending on where you send it, and definitely by the time you get done printing everything, yeah, the, the, the postage it can it can be a little, very, a little expensive. Yeah, I don't know. Most things I get like that is kind of toss and so Yeah, bill, bill. Yeah. <laughs> but it is it's something we can do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have any, anything else you wanted to talk about? Um, <clears throat> so I've been doing a little bit more research from when we spoke last about how Watery gets just over $100,000 from Duxbury for fire coverage and we get $3,000. Mm -hmm. um, it's an interesting concept because looking at the, the majority base of their, their population, it's in our coverage area actually versus water areas. They have a more spread out coverage area, but it's less people in the area we cover. So I, I found that a little bit interesting upon looking at it. And I'm going to be meeting with the select board of Duxbury come budget season because um, there's been some interest from them to talk to us and get numbers of what we've done for calls in Duxbury to figure out, you know, if, if the money is is proper or needs to change a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's just something that you know I, I've been looking at because it's, <clears throat> it's a way for us to bring in a little bit more money to help with the budgeting of the fire department. Sure. Yeah. Well, it sounds like they're they're receptive. Absolutely. Yeah, well, that's good. <clears throat> and you're going to be working on per capita. So you have a standard to go by maybe instead of just a flat fee at what we've been getting for all these years? That's actually a really good idea. I hadn't, I hadn't thought about that or looked into it, but that's a, a really good idea. Okay. Anything else? I think that, that covered us pretty well. Good, good. Yeah. No, oh, thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. And, uh, When's your actual work? work? Uh, the election. Okay. August twenty-first. Okay.
I only did it that far out to make sure I warned everybody in the fire department properly yeah. so they have plenty of time to That's plan nice, for the yeah. event. Well, I've been in here too, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And thank you, Steve, for all your yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate for the years you did that. You look very well rested. <laughs> I am. <laughs> and I have to say, I'm, I'm going to miss it. You know, I'm terrible. I've been part of my life for yeah. most How many of years. Life. Were you in total? Uh, as chief, I was five years. Yeah. And I've been doing it for 22. 22. So I think it was time for a break and yeah. Just step back and kind of enjoy my free time. <laughs> <laughs> and you've made it pretty easy um, for us as far as uh, me with the, the paperwork stuff. He pretty much already had me doing most of that stuff. But if I have any questions, it's not like he's done and gone. He still answers his phone for me. So I can ask him the silly little question about this, that, or the other thing. So it, it's been a, a decent transition thus far. Yeah. Good. You can always call. You can always call me too if you have a question of you know something that you don't know for Steve. So <clears throat> I'm here for you if you need anything, and you've been doing a great job. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, all of you. Cool. Thanks. Well, that was easy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can rest here. All right. Do you have the uh, welcome to the stage? Donald, Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. See him there? What's that? See him, you can do 715. You're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> Defendant Town of Moortown here in the town 
um, Municipal Corporation of Washington County in the state of Vermont. Four defendants, Council Calvin and Nancy Blige, are residents of the town and own property in the town at 5659 Moortown Mountain Road. Defendant Travis Blodgett is a resident and owns property in <clears throat> town at 5711 Moortown Mountain Road. And Defendant Catherine Skowitz is a resident of East Montpelier with an address of 2155 and who owns property in this town. Uh, number five, plaintiff's sole access to plaintiff's property is a trail. This trail is depicted as Legal Trail 17 on Exhibit A attached, the July 2016 Vermont General Highway Map of the town prepared by uh, Agency of Transportation. And that was denied. Plaintiff has a historic access likely obtained by prescription to its property. <clears throat> the historic access was that part of Travis's property. And uh, everything else is admitted and let's see. You guys have what, 13? And not and not uh, nine. Um, I'm surprised that something wasn't brought up on, on nine because it's it's really describing the historic crossing. It addresses that in number thirteen. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Five. That's why it was denied. Plaintiff's. Oh, okay, okay. So it was number five. Okay. <clears throat> and 13 uh, said the select board decision purports to discontinue the trail as it leaves Moortown Mountain Road, crosses Cox Brook, and extends to the Skomans Camp. Uh, so the uh, select board decision purports on its face to discontinue a portion of town trail number 17 as far as the cabin shown on town survey on land now and formerly of Kathleen Skomitz. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, it's denied it does not report it discontinues. Um, likewise, same thing in 14. Um, it, we uh, have laid it out and then 15. Admitted as to facts, legal conclusions are undiversible. And that's uh, pursuant to 19 DSA 740A. Uh, plaintiff has appealed the select board decision. And uh, in section 740A, provides when a person owning or interested in lands through which a highway is laid out. Uh, altered or resurveyed by select board members, objects to the necessity of taking the land, or is dissatisfied with the laying out, altering, or resurveying of the highway, or with the compensation for damages. He or she may appeal in accordance with Rule 74 of Vermont Rules of Civil Procedure to the Superior Court in the same county. Sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. Uh, it was denied, uh, and that's because sixteen said the plaintiff and his predecessor, Claire Lake of Van Mill, since 1991, have used Town Trail 17 for logging purposes and general access, <clears throat> which they have not. Uh, proposed trail re relocation is unusable for access to the plaintiff's property because of steepness of grade, lack of turning radius, necessity for installing bridge improvements in the town highway and safety issues. And <clears throat> that was denied. And then uh, the discontinuance of Town Trail 17 as far as Comas Camp will discontinue plaintiff's sole means of access to plaintiff's property, resulting in plaintiff retaining a private right-of-way over the portion of Town Trail number 17. 
discontinued as necessary for access to the plankton property. And that was denied. Uh, under relief requested, plaintiff requests the following relief that the court adjudge and declare select board decision null and void for lack of jurisdiction, and that 19 VSA 708A and 709 do not authorize the discontinuance of trails. <clears throat> and uh, its defendant opposes a claim that a town cannot discontinue a trail. And two, court adjudge and declare the town trail 17 is a trail as defined uh, a public right of way, which is not a highway, three rods in width. And. Can you read that one again? That one is uh, that the court. That's uh, number two, right? That's number two, right. That the court adjudge and declare that town trail number 17 is a trail as defined in 19 VSA 308A8. A public right of way, which is not a highway, three rods in width. <clears throat> So why would we oppose that? Um, because of the three rod thing? I, I was, yeah, I think of the, the three rod thing. <clears throat> what question that? Or, or, no, no, because, because I would imagine it's because they keep referring to Town Trail 17 as being the historic access. Mm -hmm. So that's probably why. Historic in their use of it, they say, but that's what they like referring to it as. I mean, they refer to the thing. Keep referring to it as, as where Lather went over. <clears throat> Not where it was not where the trail, as found by... As found by Townsend. As found by Townsend, and then abused. No, no. The court would judge and declare the town trail number 17 is a trail as defined 19 BSA 301, which is not a highway. So, I get it. So the defendant, we are opposing that the judge claim that this trail, that they, um, Montgomery wants the judge to claim that trail 17 is a public right of way three rods in width. Okay. Got it? Yeah. Because we're, um, because we're saying two rods is what the... We're saying two rods and that it's a trail. <laughs> and he wants them to say that it's a public... Public road. right of way. Yeah. Right. Okay. Not a trail as defined as defined though uh, as defined by the statute is not a public highway. It's a trail with no motorized vehicles. Mm -hmm. So he wants to be able to have motorized vehicles on it. Right, right. Okay. Follow that? Agreed? Sort of. <laughs> <clears throat> no, I, I guess I would, I assume uh, so he knows what he's doing. But I have a lot of words. You know, it's a lot of lawyer talk to me. But, right, right. <clears throat> I can't, you know, do the, all the research that he wants to do. I assume he knows what he wants to say. Right. What he's saying there is it's not a highway, it's a trail with no motorized vehicles. Yeah. Which, 
basically is, is the ordinance that they wanted you to pass in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Um, number three is alternatively, if the court determines that the select board decision properly discontinued the segment of town trail number 17, as it leaves more town mountain road, crosses Cox Brook and extends to the Skomas camp, or that the same otherwise no longer con constitutes a town trail, then the court adjudge and declare that plaintiff has a private right of way, three rods in width over the segment of town trail number 17 discontinued for access to the plaintiff's property. And defendant is not involved in the claim for private right of way over private property. <clears throat> and four, by way of further alternative relief, if the court determines that plaintiff does not have the right to use the segment of town trail number 17 discontinued, either as a legal trail or by such private, uh, private right of way, then the court adjudge and declare that plaintiff has a prescriptive right to use such segment for access to plaintiff's property. Once again, defend is not involved in any claim of prescription over private property. What that says is <clears throat> if he wants to claim, he's asking the judge to claim that if the select board turned this down, that he can use it. Exactly, yeah. right. Which is not something he should be doing in this fight, but. No. Five, that defendants lodges be ordered to remove any of their improvements that encroach on town trail 17 or any part allegedly discontinued or on any plaintiff's private right of way. <coughs> uh, defendant approves consolidation of the appeal and the civil act action. They're going to remove improvements. So th this is, doesn't have anything to do with the town. This is the Blodgetts. He named the town and the Blodgetts. Right, OK. So you're saying that, that you're OK with the consolidation of the appeal and then their civil action against Blodgett. Mm -hmm. OK. The way I look at it. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, and six, that this matter be consolidated with plaintiff's appeal, <clears throat> and defendant agrees that any relief relief be just and equitable. So we can run six and seven. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? He combined six. He combined five and six. Five and six. Yeah. All right. Okay. <clears throat> that one just needs a motion. So I will. Um, I will move that uh, we accept the answer prepared by Paul Gillis. Second. Any more discussion on it? All in favor say aye. 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 authorizes this procedure, but if such a motion were proper, it cannot be heard, given the recent appeal of this matter by Montgomery Timber Company, LLC. The select board no longer has jurisdiction over this matter, 
Consequently, it denies the motion to amend or alter. I will we accept that response. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Uh, this is yeah, that's what we're discussing right now. <clears throat> Sold it. 
We did not have an easement before we sold it. I have been pushing. Yeah, I mean, I thought we had all the easements, huh? Well, we did until the state came along and said, as far as the catch basin go, that we needed to change that catch basin over there. So that's just something new. Oh, okay. When they were doing the plans um, that went into the state, the state said we need we need to an easement to change that because we can't find one that we have in the state. Yeah. And that was probably two weeks ago. Maybe not that long. Well, I guess so. I mean, it doesn't Doug is ready to go. As, as soon as that easement, as soon as we have that easement, I feel the, the state will have the permit, 1111 permit from the state as soon as we have that easement. Yep. We have all the other easements. So it's highly unlikely it's going to be built this year. Probably not. Yeah. Which is a pretty big disappointment to me. I mean, we worked hard on getting all those other easements. Yeah, it seems like it just, nobody wants to get it done. It just keeps on, not us, but mm -hmm. the engineering, or the state, it just keeps on going backwards. Yeah. Unfortunately so. But, okay, that's the update. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> references and they were all wonderful. One person I spoke to, so he built their whole house. <laughs> it wasn't a small job. Um, uh, then, so we have, the other thing is we have a bunch of the leftover cabinet faces because they're not gonna be used. Um, and when uh, they did all the cleaning, everything got put into a big pile in the middle of the room. And as I'm putting it all away, a lot of it is junk that needs to be thrown away. There's an old bulletin board that's garbage. There's a bunch of random construction debris. There's old vents that have just been piling and piling up. So our dumpster doesn't take that kind of stuff. So I had a &J Recycling, their local business, come down and give me a price to take it all away. Um, and for him to go in and get it out of the building and take it away would be $200. It would cost us, I think, more for the guys in their time with the truck and taking it to the dump. Mm. So I was asking for permission to have him do that. I'll make that motion that we go ahead and have, what was it? A and J Recycling. A and J Recycling. Remove the um, construction and other debris from the town hall for 300 and- 200. $200. Mm -hmm. Second. Okay. Discussion on that? Mm -hmm. All in favor, is there aye? Aye. Okay. okay. I'm going to my old business. I have new business. Well, oh, new business. business. Yeah. yeah. Are we expecting yeah, more trust fees? In case you have questions about the survey, right? Uh, so, yeah, so we uh, had a meeting yesterday and we looked at the um, yeah, we looked at the agenda and saw that we were on it. So we thought we'd move on. Okay. And discuss a few other things while we're here. Okay. Right. Were you expecting us or were you just going to discuss it? We were just giving them the survey. Oh, giving it to them? Yeah. Oh, okay. That was all. <laughs> we have so much more to give. <laughs> well, we gave them the survey like a week ago. Yeah, I mean, chance to read it. So it's good that you're here in case they have questions. Just 
So um, I have copies of the survey. I also have um, a timeline. We have now developed a timeline for the project. And we have some um, things to follow up. Would people like to see a copy of that? Is it So, um, we're already past early July. We came up with uh, the, uh, we have a subcommittee that is the Community Outreach uh, committee that came up with this particular survey, which is called the Ask Questionnaire. Um, various people who are associated with the library, trustees, employees, volunteers, friends of the library, have been asked to just take this out to the community, talk to people face to face, get the ideas about, um, you know, what they're think, what they like. It's, it starts out with what do you like about Moortown and really how to um, make the library um, uh, a, a more vibrant part of the town, and also gives us the chance to introduce the reasons it would be good to move into the town hall and not and, and reassure people that they won't be losing their town hall. Um, so that's happening, and then we um, are going to, uh, there, you are, there we are right now, August 6th, that's the select board. <laughs> um, August 13th, uh, they're going to be developing an online survey, which is going to be more of a nuts and bolts kind of survey, like, would you like this? Would you like that? Do you want, you know, not as open-ended questions as the survey that we have here. So we have two kinds of surveys going on, trying to get more um, information about community needs and wants. Um, uh, we're going to, in September, also identify resources and stakeholders from conversations, meet with some key groups. The select board, you are one of the stakeholders, and um, I'll come back to that, but we would, uh, Corey would like some time to meet with you all. Um, by the end of September, we're hoping to, oh, we're hoping to have, uh, maybe gather some, have some surveys at Morefest, be able to talk to people then, and then from more fest until the end of September, um, correlate, uh, collate the data. Um, in the beginning of October, we uh, have, we received a lovely gift. Corey went to a library, I don't know what conference, and there were some door prizes, and Waterbury won this prize to have. Black River Design come and do some consultation. But since they had just redone their library, they didn't need it, so they gave it to us. So um, they're going to come and talk to Corey, um, and she's going to use the information we get from the surveys to talk about a vision and get some feedback from them. Um, November, um, we are thinking that um, that's budget time. Um, which meeting is it? When do you, is it like, do you usually have a second uh, Monday of the month special meeting for budget? Not usually until they're ready to pack it up. So I'm going to be asking for budgets um, prob probably by the 15th of October. Okay. Ooh, October. October? Oh, yeah. Well, it starts then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that may change our plan a little bit. Okay. That gives, and the reason for that is it gives time for if people with departments want to come in and explain their budgets, you can do that in a November, you know. Okay, but then there is, isn't there like one meeting where the, or is there more than one meeting where the, the select board discusses the budget yeah. and finalizes that? Continuing yeah, every continue. meeting, yeah. they'll do a portion here, a portion there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So then um, in January, we will be having um, some things in the town report, kind of describing our, um, our year as always, but also the progress and the plans for the future with this move. Um, 
And then we had a lot of discussion and we wanted to ask more about this. So we, we think that town meeting is a, um, is a, a day that we're shooting for something to happen. We're, we aren't quite sure what you're, you all are thinking is going to happen on that day. So are you thinking we're going to give a presentation um, about what our hopes and plans are and just get general feedback from town meeting? Do you think there's going to be a vote of some sort, an article that day that's voted on from the floor, an article that's on the ballot? Would it be a yes or no, we should do this? Would it be a budget line item? So we're just wondering, what should we be planning for to happen on town meeting day? <coughs> Right. You're going to have a budget. You're going to have a budget and idea of a design. Yes. So I would love to see a design at town meeting as to a presentation. Bring, yeah. Mm -hmm. To bring to the people. As a well, as a possible design, along with an open discussion. Yeah. Open um, discussion. Because we weren't sure. Yeah. Okay. You know, and, and but open discussion with your input because you've put a lot of thought into this already. So. Right. Because. Right. Um, right. Nothing beyond that at this point. Right. Well, I'm just thinking when I hear design, we're going to have to pay somebody for that design. Right? No, we've well, right. got a gift right. for now. Yeah, okay, so that, that gives me my next Black question. Black River Design. Black River right. is now giving us this. Does that mean we're going to go with Black River? It doesn't. We'll have well, to see what we hear. Yeah, I, that's what I would like to see. I would like to see more than just one architect, even though they're I, you know, I've got nothing against Black River Design, I do a lot of work with them, but there are a lot of architects, and even though they're offering a free consultation, I don't think that commits us to them at that point. No, no. And I, yeah, that's fine. We can listen to them. I think that we're thinking that's a starting point. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. yeah. That, that's fine. Uh, um, at this point, we're just talking about a basis for discussion. Here's what this architect came up with, right. here are some other thoughts. Yes. What does everybody think? Yeah. And that's, that's it. Yes. So we're not paying anybody to go do anything yet. This is fine. Right, right. Think. Um, so like, are we thinking that we might have two separate budgets, like one just our general usual yearly operating budget, and then one that would be possible move budget? I think that, or would we have all yeah. one? I, no, I think you have to keep them separate. Separate, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. yeah. see, we need, we need this information to mm -hmm. make sure. up. Do what we need to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Doesn't mean you can't combine them within, but you'll want to spread Break it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, before we, uh, Jen, did you want to add anything to my, um, well, my explanation of the timeline? Oh, no, I think that, um, by we kind of did this like backwards design thinking where we were thinking well at town meeting something what needs to happen ahead of mm -hmm. time so that we would mm -hmm. be prepared so it sounds like being prepared with the design and a presentation that design would have the input of the consultation in addition to two design nights which would invite the community involvement and the oh, budget. I skipped that so I don't want to know budget and the budget as well mm -hmm. for the design of, for this particular design yeah. Your design, even if you have a different designer, your budget's not going to be that much different. Sure. Your budget might be different by the cost of the bids that come in from the design company. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be part of your budget to hiring a designer if you have to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that would be very helpful would be to know the as is budget and not only the one-time budget for making the change, but what the ongoing operating budget would be. Once we move. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a right. big deal. Yes, and we have talked about, I mean, we talked about that in broad terms, not too specific mm -hmm. yet, but yes. And since we don't know exactly what you're doing yet, it's very hard to have an operating budget for it, and we understand that. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, think in those terms and come up with what you can. And then the idea would be, the presentation and the open discussion at town meeting mm -hmm. with the budget detail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. Yes.
So I want to go back to one of the things I said in, in um, September. It says identify resources and stakeholders. Um, Corey would like you to think about maybe setting some time aside to meet with her, whether it's in here at a regular meeting or if it's a special meeting or maybe it's at the library or maybe it's at the town hall. That might be conducive. But um, she would really like to get it in. Not a long meeting. She said 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, but she would like to get um, an idea as, uh, as the select board, as the primary stakeholders, what are your goals for the library? What are your goals for us um, moving? What are your goals, you know, why um, you have these, these goals? Um, so she would just like to get some more mm -hmm. information. It's going to be hard to get the goals mm -hmm. until you've got some budget, I would think. Well, I don't think we we didn't have a budget when the mm -hmm. when the idea started, so maybe just exactly. just mm -hmm. stop, talk about the idea itself. I'm okay with discussing goals before money, and you may find out you can't afford your goals, which <laughs> you know is, is one possible outcome. Well, that's we a, that's a chance goals. I take by talking about the goals before they happen. That's right. I mean, that's mm -hmm. a chance that you're taking. And we did have the initial. Yeah. Mm -hmm budget that you worked up. Yes. So, yes. 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 We do have some. So if that's changed. Not, not yet. That, that probably won't change, change until we get our um, survey results back and, and the design data. And it's not mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. um, so should. Now, uh, also in September with the uh, stakeholders, the um, historical society has been Active in. They're on my list. Okay. <laughs> I have a long list, John. Okay. <laughs> I always have a list. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, uh, I, I just want to finish up that um, uh, point about Corey wanting to meet. Um, how would you think you would be the best way to do that? Have a special time to meet with her. Have her come to a regular meeting. Mm -hmm. Have her come to a regular meeting. Yeah, yeah I think that um, would be the best. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Have her contact you, you contact her, or you want. Why don't you have her send me an email? Okay. Uh, requesting mm -hmm. requesting to come in um, probably the 17th of September. She wanted to do September. Okay. We'll put her on the Or would it be better to have it before more fest? Um, Does it really matter? I don't. Think so. We had September open for that, so we wanted to offer flexibility. Okay. This is going to be more of the same uh, thing of getting results and working on mm -hmm. designs based on needs and desires in the community. So the 17th would be a good date for that because that's only two days good. after work. Yeah, I think it's a good time. Mm -hmm. yep. So, okay. So we have that meeting at the town hall just to, you know. You could always walk over if you wanted to, I suppose. It can be at the town hall. Yeah, yeah. And that's a good idea. We have to meet at the town hall. Okay. And yeah. Just, yeah. yeah, that'd be nice. We could be right there, and if we, you know, we're all talking, we can. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be a lot easier to yeah. mm -hmm. get the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question on the survey. Yes. Or maybe a question for the survey, just because I hate to let the marketing opportunity go by. Okay. What do you think of adding a question about, uh, uh, would you consider using the town hall facilities and see what people say? You, as, you mean the way they are now? The way people uh, use it now? Um, let's elaborate. How, what, what else along those lines could that question say? Like how uh, would you consider using how would the you, town hall? Yes. Or have you ever used the town hall? Would you consider using it again? Great. That might tell you whether you they have, yeah. and it might tell you and what's missing. Well, yes, what use would you like to make of it in the future? Yeah. Okay, good. Thank That's you. great. Thanks. That could also be... That'll be in the follow-up survey. Yeah, exactly. But we got more surveys coming, so it's not too late. <laughs> um, so, let's look at my list here. Excellent. As long as you're out there talking to people, maybe you can get some business out of it. Um, okay. Any more? I have so I have a couple more items on my list I want to mention. Any more questions about the timeline or the survey before I move on? No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so my next question is, I would like to get a, um, um, I would like to make it clear that um, we've talked about, we're, we're working on a title search for that building and the little bit of land that's on. Um, and it looks like from what I've heard so far, we should be able to sell it. Um, I would like to know if the select board is committed to letting the library trustees keep, spend that money, whatever money could be possibly raised, on the library improvements for the town hall. Um, if we were going ahead and making plans and thinking we'd have some income and then you said, well, we'd like that to go into the general fund, that would be... So we would need to know that. Okay. Yeah, we need to know that. So um, I wondered if we could just make it formal. Do you all agree? Do you not, have you not thought about that? I didn't think we even had jurisdiction. No. I think that's your no, library's that's property. Budget. Library so, trustees' property. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that, that, that's what I was going to say. Whatever, it depends on where, who, how the deed is written. Yes. If it's deeded to the, the library it trustees. It is. Yeah. But I didn't know because we were now municipal if you would feel like yeah. that was going to change anything. So, but you, you are all committed to that. You don't feel like you. I don't see that the question comes up. Okay. If it's yeah. Your I like that answer, Jason. <laughs> committed to using the proceeds from the property to help pay for Yes, that. should we sell it? That's what we would definitely, because we want something, yes, we want something nice and functional that's mm -hmm. going to be a, you know, a great place for the town, the town as a library, and there are, you know, many things that a library can be, but also we want to design it so that mm -hmm. people can still use it and have their town hall. So yeah, so that would serve, that would really help. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. That, that's the part I'm still waiting for, you know, to see okay. how that can be done. Yes, mm -hmm. we're getting there. Mm -hmm. We're going to do our best. <laughs> um, all right. Um, we wondered. Um, so we we read that the kitchen was being redone, mm -hmm. um, and we didn't know if, if uh, it sounds like maybe it's too late for us to have any. Um, we were thinking if we were moving into that building, maybe we would be part of that conversation of what was going to be um, done in terms of the kitchen. The kitchen right? is not so much it's not done. Yeah. Yeah. And there was a mold issue. Right, well, we knew that, but then yeah. aren't there, so there's not like any redesign no. going on in the kitchen? I'll just going to go back together. How are you then? <laughs> that answers that question. Thank you. Um, so when So the kitchen is all back right. together now? No, the cabinets were, were three weeks out when you ordered them last week. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk about, you brought up before John, um, the Historical Society. Um, we have reached out to them. Um, they have participated in the community outreach subcommittee. We have two subcommittees going now. We've got the community engagement, I said community outreach, really, it's called community engagement, and we've got the subcommittee of trustees that meet every other month when we don't have a regular meeting to discuss the move. Yes. We could very well, don't we have a third, do we have another subcommittee? For the hiring of the assistant. Oh, library. that's, yes, that's separate. Um, so we have um, invited the Historical Society to our meetings and really reached out to them and invited them to come along to the town hall with us. They're still not, they're still somewhat lukewarm with that idea, as far as I can tell. Um, and I, we sort of feel like the library has been put in the middle of this between the Historical Society and the Select Board. It was the Select Board's idea for us to move, and you contacted us but nobody contacted the select board. And the historical society, although you're on it, right, right? right. You're part of it. Um, so 
the plan was, as far as we understood it, for the town to save money by having one less building. But if the historical society stays in there, that doesn't save any money. So we're just wondering what are you all thinking about in terms of the historical society and maybe reaching out to them from the select board. Or maybe you feel like you've already done that. I don't know. Right. <laughs> I guess I don't have the exact answer. Um, I, I think the historical society was hoping that they could, they would, they were going to have that building if it moved. But um, I don't know if that was a select board intention that that building would stay if, if it moved. I don't think I mean, it was. I don't think that that's really a decision that we've made, and I think that there's yeah. information that will be needed before we can make that decision. Namely, what is the marketability of that building? I suspect we're going to find out that we're not going to be swimming in high dollar offers for yeah. that building. Um, I, I think the I think the, more, the historical society is most concerned about maintaining the historical mm -hmm. part of that building, the town hall perspective of it. You think that's more of a concern than possibly vacating the library? I, I think so. I, I, I think I, it I, is. I, I would yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maintain that. Well, that's good for us to know in our planning. Mm -hmm. that, because that was not the, um, I don't think that's been really on our radar. We've been more focused on them not wanting to leave the building right. where they're in now. There, I mean, there is concern that there is, what are they going to do with their, mm -hmm. all their stuff? Mm -hmm. you yeah. know, and how is it going to be displayed or mm -hmm. kept in the town? Where is it going to be kept? Mm -hmm. We haven't addressed that. Mm -hmm. but, how often do you meet? Um, they, and I don't get to every meeting. Uh, they usually meet at least once a month. Mm -hmm. So. Because of the um, curtains mm -hmm. and things, right? The curtain is one thing. Mm -hmm. Roughly, how much does that building cost a year again? Anybody remember? Which one? The library. The, the current library. library. Not much. It heats very inexpensively. Mm -hmm. The power is very inexpensive. Yeah. So we're going to hit that much, and there's not that much going on in there. Yeah. I'm thinking that if we want to retain some of that space for the historic society, and we're currently paying for storage at Whitesfield, that may be a way to save some cost. Would definitely be a way of saving mm -hmm. some cost if, you know, what if the library trustees would approve that? Of course. Right. Yes. It's mm -hmm. going to need to know how much it would sell for if it's worth the benefit of. Um, the assumption, the assumption yeah. there is we don't get good offers. Yeah, I already so, had somebody uh, tell me when you said, "If you mm -hmm. guys sell that, let me know right away. Oh, really? I'll buy it." Good. Wow. Okay. <laughs> now, whether it would actually happen, you know, talk is cheap. Mm -hmm. But I said, I don't know who would want. Go in there, you know, there's no bathroom. She's like, I think this person, I think a lot of people would like that. Okay. I maybe we should put that on our timeline. Hmm. Yep. The real estate yep. exploration. Yep. Um, but I guess what I'm wondering, back to my original point, is if maybe the historical society, uh, the select board, would like to reach out to the historical yeah. society a little right. more. Right. Reach out to Denise. Sure. Okay. I'll do that. I think that covers it. That's everything. You have a little list there, didn't you? I, I always have a list. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Um, any more questions for us? Nope. Okay. All right. All right. Well, thank you. So when is your when is your next meeting? Um, our next regular meeting is August. 13th, is that right, John? No, the committee engage, community engagement we're meeting tomorrow. The 7th is tomorrow. That's right? subcommittee. So the regular subcommittee. Okay, right. so the community engagement subcommittee tomorrow. Regular trustees meeting August 13th. And what time? 
When, where, and what time is that? That will be at the library from 7 to 8.30. You guys are late. Well, I, I want, I'm put, I actually just mentioned this, like maybe we can meet earlier because I'm off in bed at 8. So I would like to, I would like to start a little earlier. So if. But at this time, as far as I know, it will be 7 to 8.30. That's because the library's uh, close at that point, but in the old days, we used to, say anybody here was, no, nobody here with all the trustees. We used to meet in the library when the library was open and if people came in, they could look for a book or they could join in the meeting. Um, so if I could talk to Denise and um, there's a historical society and get them to come to this meeting and try to find some common ground and goals, would that would that do anything, or are you are you looking for to bring the historical society in into the select board next meeting? Uh, what do you what do you which way do you think we should be going with this? Um, uh, I, don't I, think I, I yeah, I, I would think that they would be you know at the next meeting. Yeah. I got, next the, for a meeting? I got yeah. the impression that they felt maybe that the, a step was skipped and not like the select board spoke to us but didn't speak to them. I don't know. I don't yeah. know either, but uh -huh. let's just say. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes, okay. but yeah. after the process started. Um, I mean, when you say after the process, sorry, after they were in here the last time? Right? No, no, I mean after we started oh, oh, okay. talking about the move. And, um, I, I, I think initially they felt that some decisions had been made without them, which yes. I think they're now clear is not the case. Is that accurate? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah I that's, think that's, that's right. right. That's what I, they, uh, I think that they thought the project was going faster than what it really was, that they were hearing things were that it was a definite thing that's going to happen, but in fact, we still don't even know what's going to happen, right? That, yes. <laughs> right. Yes. Now, I yes. believe their main concern is that there's not going to be a multi-use building. Right. Right. So, so that's number one concern. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It, it's been a community building, mm -hmm. community center. Uh, building. And, and I, I think it's accurate to say that we're insisting on the multi-use building. Is that Are accurate? you speaking of current <laughs> interactions with them? or? I'm just saying that I feel like the, like it seems like we're pushing, I felt like they felt like we are pushing them. I don't feel like that's true. I feel like we were just trying to do what we were asked, what was best for the town, what was best for the library. But currently, are, are they still having these conversations since they've met with the select board? Select board? Um, we no, haven't the really, last one was at the community engagement, and it was just around what kinds of questions. Do yes, you want we haven't really had a discussion. So, so I think they were fine when they last spoke mm -hmm. to you. But so maybe I'm just being oversensitive. But, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I, but I just want to make sure. I'll make it a point to try okay. and get this. Mm -hmm. so, yes. and, and, so and if if anybody wants to, if you want to come to a, our meeting, just let me know. I'll put it on the agenda. Yep, I will. Beautiful. Okay. I think we're good. I'll let you know either way. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks for your time. Good. Yes. Okay. Thanks for coming in. All right. Roll in. 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 Roll
So bulletin board repair. Yes, they're in bad shape. <laughs> Man, I, I know, I've been meaning to bring that up for months. That we need to do bad something. Bad shape. So what do we want to do? Do we want to take them down, except for the one that's designated as a posting place on Cobb Hill, or do we want to fix them? The one on Jones Brook and the one on the Mountain Road are really terrible shape. The one at Cobb Hill is not as bad because that one's kind of more out in the open, not mm -hmm. under trees. And mm -hmm. That one could probably last for a couple more years. <clears throat> but the one so. on Jones Brook and the one on the Mountain Road, something needs to be done or taken down. Any feel for whether they're used or? I don't think they're used, mm -hmm. which is too bad. Yeah. We don't post anything on them. I post one cop hill in the store. Well, unless it's um, you know, primary ballots or something like that. But as far as meeting agendas and stuff, we post them in the four places. And mm -hmm. That's designated and that's it. I think it was a good idea at the time, but I don't think anyone uses it. Right. Okay. And you know, now we have front porch forum and so on too. So. On the website. Yeah. <clears throat> so I would, I think they should be taken down. Yeah. Is there any way we, we would know if someone uses them? I've never heard mm -hmm. of any. I think well, we, could, I know we're alive. we could put something on front porch forum before we take them down. Well, yeah. that reaches the wrong group, but yeah. it's reaching the people who are on front porch forum. I, I, oh. Yeah, I'm not I mean, only speaking about the one on Jones Road, mm -hmm. uh, I think the location is not is not good. You know, I think if we had a, a board there where people could pull in rather than right by the bank, you know, <clears throat> ideally it'd be on the other side of the road, the Ruggles side, right before Ruggles, if we could somehow work out something there, I think it'd be more used. Wouldn't you think so? Mm -hmm. uh, more yeah, user maybe. friendly, possibly. It would be more user friendly. Well, uh, it might be, it might work at the bus stop too. What's that? Isn't there a bus stop there? Should come off Ward Brook too? Is there a turnout for the bus stop? No. Uh, U32 bus. No. U32 no. bus turns around there. Harwood bus turns around at Lynch Hill. At Lynch Hill. Mm -hmm. so, I would, you know, I would think. Mm, we should take it down until we can find a better location. Rather than they do it, they're an eyesore right now. Mm -hmm. If someone mentions it or gives a call, then you can rethink about that. But I don't think that's going to happen. Um, right. How about this? This board will be taken down on this date. If you need this board, please call the town office at. We can post something like that on. Yeah, I saw that. If, if nobody notices, then... Okay. Oh, yeah. and then we'll new ones are like the best. Exactly. FYI. The new ones are between 1,300 and 2,500, just FYI. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. More fast. So, the PTO would like permission to have a beer tent at Moorfest. Um, it's town event, so it would be under the town of Moortown. It would be our it would be our name on the application fee. They would pay for everything. They would incur all the cost and get all the benefits. Um, we've hired a sheriff already for the event, and um, the reason one the main reason they're asking is. One, a lot of people have asked us to do one. And two, the PTO needs a really quick, big money maker. Normally they start the year, I'm on the PTO also. Normally we start the year with enough money to run all the programs through the whole year. And this year we have like 800 bucks. So we don't have enough money to run in this year's programs, let alone time to make money for next year's programs. So that was why we were asking. And Morefest committee obviously <laughs> said, Yes, and that we would ask the select board. <laughs> the reason they're, they're not doing it, they won't, we won't have our insurance in time to do it, which is why we're asking for it to be under the town of town's name instead of the PTOs. 
But the server has a liquor license. Yeah, the server has a liquor license, just like in any yeah. bar. The bartender's responsible. Mm -hmm. All the all of us have to be DCL certified, which mm -hmm. you do online and get certified. Same thing that happens for a wedding or something in the town hall. Mm -hmm. You know, the server mm -hmm. serving the liquor at the wedding has to have a license. Yeah. So the town has no liability. Yes, right. As long as the town has no liability, because I know that's a touchy thing. Like if you do a BYOB wedding and anything happens, you're right out for that. That's on mm -hmm. whoever it is. So it would have to be a certified person. Yeah, the event is the event is in town and more town same because it's a town event. But the PTO are the people serving it. They're the ones that will be certified to serve it. That is the town event, so our insurance covers it. Whether there's beer tent or not, <laughs> the conversation. Can you talk about. to the Morfest committee on your committee's good with that? Yeah, I'm the head of the Morfest committee. <laughs> We're good with it. <laughs> no, everyone actually, it was Karen Sharpwolf brought it up before I even told them about the PTO, so it's not just the PTO wanting to do it. So, is it a. Uh, a controlled area? Yes, so it has to be. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That's my next question. If you say yes to this, I need to know if the road crew can then come set up a snow fence for us. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and the sheriff will monitor the... Oh, yeah. And, and we, we've hired the sheriff department to be here, re mm -hmm. regardless if there's... So does any money from this go to Morefest? No, it's a PTO fundraiser, okay. which Morefest is fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Morefest does not want some no. haircut on this to help fund Morefest? Nope. Everybody does. I mean, other people, Historical Society will do their own fundraiser mm -hmm. at, at Morefest as well. It's, it's the point of that. We don't want to take our money. We raise money for ourselves. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just like if the fire department was selling corn, we wouldn't take anything from them either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. I talked to Tom earlier. I think that's, that's why he was trying to call you guys. Oh, is that right? Just to let you let the board know that he was okay with it. Oh, okay. I think that's probably why he was trying to call you mm -hmm. and then... He had said that to me last week when we talked to him about it too. Okay. So then you can approve that by signing it. By signing it. So that's the application. The PTO will give me a check to send in with it. It's just a it's a, a general festival permit for the Department of Liquor. Okay. And then is it okay to ask the road crew, even if they can just provide us with the snow fence, we can set it up. It'd be nice if they would set it up for us, because it will be it will sit on the backstop. So that will be one fence of it, mm -hmm. and then it'll come around and have only one entrance and exit. They're going to be over here anyways to help and set up some other stuff, aren't they? Aren't they? Did they help set up some other stuff before? No. But, but yeah, they don't have a problem with that. Hopefully they're going to be here with the truck. Yeah, I'm going to talk to them about that, that too. So. All right, thank you. We have something more exciting than this truck. Yeah, right here. Do you have a motion on that, or is that okay? No, uh, uh, yeah. I'm good with just a signature. I mean, if you want to do a motion. Why don't we make it <laughs> official? Sure. Go ahead. Do you want to move? Yeah, I'll move. Okay. Um, I have a motion to approve the application for festival. I move that we approve the PTO's application for festival permit. Second more Okay, second. Any more discussion on it? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Mayor official. <laughs> Any other new business? Yeah, it's a fair. It's the same time as a fair. Oh, I know that. Yeah, right. I just right, learned right. that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> same day as the Cambridge Fair. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Sad that that's right. Sad that it's so a we're, fair. I mean, fair. Uh, we're going to have a beer tent, yes, but ours is more geared towards families. And I think a Saturday night, to me, a Saturday night at the Cumberbatch Fair doesn't scream family entertainment. So I don't no. take my family <laughs> See, I don't take my family like to <laughs> Definitely Cheryl's never been to the Cumberbatch Fair. Come on. Oh my 
parents wouldn't let me go when I was 15, 16, 17, Well, one of, one of the things that were, are one of the... My parents were strict. I had to be in bed at 8.30 when I was in high school. One of the also, <laughs> one of the new things Morefest is doing is a more town citizen of the year, so the select board will be invited to come to Morefest to present that anyway. Okay. Yeah, uh, we didn't kill LinkedIn. Oh, I know, you have to talk more about that. <laughs> all right. Uh, we'll still have the car show and all that. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. She, I think she already has, it's actually going to be the um, Haskins Memorial car show. The gentleman that owns mm -hmm. Telecom. So it'll be done. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to continue mm -hmm. as that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, no more new business? Oh, minutes. Minutes of July 16. I don't think I was here. What? Or no, that was a night. You were here for the first No. No, 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 there's two sets of minutes that have to be approved. Yeah, one of them says 8.30. Yeah, 8.30. No, it's yeah, yeah, 30. Yeah. There's 7.30 and 7.30. Okay. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Did you get the email that I sent on the 7.30? I did. But I don't have to be here to... No, you don't. No. No. So I'll no. make a motion for the minutes at 7.16. No second. A discussion on those minutes? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. And July 30th. Same motion. Aye. Same second. Any more discussion? Yes, I've got some okay. corrections to that. Um, from the top, overruns is one word. Um, then in the section regarding the delinquent taxes, I wanted to change the wording there significantly. Um, what I would like to have it say is Jason spoke about explicitly showing delinquent taxes in the tax rate formula, but the board chose not to do that, period. The select board's report will explain the moving pieces that go into the tax rate, or I think I added, um, that was Tom Martin's suggestion, mm -hmm. and that I was fine with it. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that's, that's the way you yeah, presented yeah. it. So I think the way I emailed it to you is mm -hmm. a little better than what I scribbled here. Okay. And finally, in the last paragraph, it is nominating clerks and treasurer, not treasurers. Yeah. Yeah, treasurers. I saw that up there. Okay. Okay. So. Approved as amended. Aye. And I second as amended. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. So just for the record though, minutes are not verbatim. Right. Right. Now the reason I made that correction is I think the sense of it is. Well, I wrote in yeah. my minutes that mm -hmm. you wanted to add a number. I mean, you specifically said yes, that. Yes, yes. So, I mean, you're, you're kind of just changing it to make it, I mean, um, you're not changing the meaning of it at no, all. It, adding a number is ambiguous in this case because it may mean That's what adding, you said. Wait, wait, wait. It, it may mean adding money to the tax rate. Okay. Which is definitely That's not, not how you explained it right. during the meeting. No, which definitely isn't what so it So, technically, it. it can't be changed because it wasn't said during the meeting. That's what I'm saying. It needs to reflect what's being said mm -hmm. at the meeting, not what you remember to change it to afterwards. That is correct. I think, though, that this is distilling a longer discussion. That's it. That's there. Okay. Oh, yeah. Are folks okay with that? This isn't the Just for the future, yeah. Meeting. I mean, just for the future, the minutes should reflect what was said at the meeting. Right. Mm -hmm. But you can add an addition. Like you did, you know, for Tom out of this because that was mm -hmm. said at the meeting. Yeah, that I agree with should have been mm -hmm. in there. But this is changing what you said at the meeting to something you didn't say at the meeting. 
I can't say my recollection is that accurate. Yeah, I, but, <laughs> I mean, I listened to it to make sure I didn't do it wrong. Right. Okay, so I would say to make it right, um, why don't we add that for tonight's minutes? Mm -hmm. Okay. So in other words, not change the, the wording like you said, all the other changes, okay? Yeah, the, and yes. And then Jason but, mentioned tonight that this is what no, you yeah, really yeah, meant. Yeah, that would be the one, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what I was trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Jack. It's, it's, it's no big deal. It's just the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. doesn't change the... Right. just kind of defines... Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? And let's sign on. John, where are you going on vacation? What's that? Where are you going on vacation? Oh, uh, Canadian Rock. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, beautiful. <coughs> Is she on the Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, actually, we're meeting um, her sister, um, uh, her brother-in-law. Nice. <coughs> we're going to meet them in Calgary and yeah, spend the whole time there. Nice. Yeah. And how uh, took me driving or bus or? No, we're flying from Montreal to Calgary and then renting a car and <coughs> going to the six national parks. That's my oh, idea of awesome. vacation. Yeah. It's going to be a beautiful landscape. My brother's going to fly the main crew and his friends and then drive all the way back. Yeah. Yeah. Those people are buying the salvage yard. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Hmm. Who's doing that? That's a couple. GHR Enterprises in Bristol. Oh. And there's also by signing that, there's also a number of years you're giving that to for. The normal is five. Five, okay. been signed by Stefan and Katrina. Uh, listers, uh, Arizona Missions 2018 Grand List. They request approval to make the following changes to the 2018 Grand List under Arizona Missions, Title 32, Section 4261. And the parcel uh, owner's name, is it Rit Ritty? Or is that supposed to be Rudy? Rudy. Rudy. Yeah. Uh, El Powen and Jordan Gonda. Change in value from zero to $100,000. <clears> Reason failed to enter data into Grand West. Mm 
there needs to be a discussion on that soon if you are thinking about bringing it to the rest of the board about mm -hmm. making any changes in the districts. Right. That we Did you, about. Yeah. And is there any material we need or any proposal that we should? You would need yeah. an article to do away with the listers. Right. So that's but good. I think before we would do that, we would need to know more about the cost, the cost and the services, etc. So. If um, that's it. Yeah, I mean, if you bring that before the board, um, and if they're interested in it, we can certainly get you that information. Okay. Yeah. Um, what would the cost work? Okay. Um, the, before the yeah, adjourn, is it yeah, okay. I'm thinking one more. I